Today, Lyft announced a goal of theirs. The goal is to have all the cars that are Lyft cars be electric vehicles by the year 2030. That's in 10 years from now. So that means uh, the express drive vehicles, which are the cars that they rent out to drivers. That means the autonomous vehicles that they're planning to replace drivers with and even uh, personal uh, driver's cars, that they're all going to be electric vehicles by the year 2030. So in this video, I'm going to share with you details of this announcement and give you my take on it. And stick around. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you what I think are the most important factors for us, the drivers, to consider when we're looking at driving an electric vehicle. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. It's 11.30. I'm having about my sixth Nespresso. <laughs> but I always like to bring an espresso in the car when I start to make a video. All right, let's get into the background. So uh, today, I was at my desk, you know, doing my thing, and I got my Rideshare Guy email for the day. And it said, Lyft announces 2030 goal of transitioning platform to electric vehicles. So that's kind of a big announcement. And they want to get it all done by the year 2030. All right, so let's jump into some of the topics here. Okay, number one, why and how is this going to get done? So the why part is Lyft is being a forward-thinking company and most people acknowledge that we've got a climate crisis and by going green we're putting less emissions into the air which is a good thing for all of us, right? I like to think about it like if we were living in a balloon, which we are, and you have to put some smoke in the balloon that's not good for those of us that have to breathe it, right? So let's stop putting the smoke in the balloon, and that's a good thing. So I applaud Lyft for that. How are they going to do it? What you're seeing here is uh, Lyft has outlined three steps to get to fully electric vehicle on their platform by 2031. Focusing on policies to achieve EV cost parity with gas-powered vehicles. So that means they're going to look, look uh, to make it so that Driving an electric vehicle will cost the same or less than driving a gas-powered vehicle. Number two, lead with express drive uh, electric vehicles, rentals, to provide nearer-term EV access. Okay, that makes sense. And then three, build demand for electric vehicles among millions of uh, Lyft platform users, that's us, the drivers, including drivers and passengers. And certainly, Number three in that list is going to be the hardest one because getting all drivers to want to drive electric vehicles when electric vehicles definitely have some problems for those of us who are drivers. Number two, when will drivers switch? So a uh, Lyft provided this little bit of a graph, which you're looking at right now, and it's a Lyft's electrification path by vehicle segment. So the, uh, the, the kind of the pink colored line is the express drive vehicles. So they have 100% control over those. And as you can see, they're planned by the year 2022 to have 20% of their vehicles all electric. And by the year about 2027, uh, 100%. Whereas the blue, you can see the drivers, those are our cars. We don't really do anything for the next six years. And then in 2026, using their projections, they say, that the electric vehicles will be attractive for us drivers and therefore we'll start using them and then we all meet happily in the year 2030 and they've achieved their goal. What's important though is that uh, it's not a requirement. So Lyft is not saying that drivers have to be driving electric vehicles by the year 2030. So it's really more of a goal, more of an aspiration than a declaration of the way things are going to be. Can you hear that? It's a helicopter. They're out to get me. <laughs> so number three, what are the factors around driving an electric vehicle? Well, first, of course, is the cost. Um, electric vehicles are expensive. 
and uh, and you've also got to uh, another factor is you got to have a source of electricity to power up your car at night. I think a, a bigger issue for me is the range, right? Unless you're getting a Tesla, which has like 350 to 400 miles, most of them have much less than that. And I personally would not want to drive. I've talked to some people who've driven a Bolt, and they would drive for you know three or four hours. Then for lunch, they'd have to go home, plug in, you know, and get juiced up 100% to go back out in the afternoon. That didn't would not appeal to me. This car that I've got right here is a Honda Hybrid, Honda Accord Hybrid. It gets about 40 miles per gallon. Gas is not that expensive right at the moment. And I get close to 600 miles a tank. That's very attractive. The other thing is most of the electric cars, except for the Teslas that I've seen, aren't that comfortable looking. I mean, I'm in the lap of luxury here. I got everything and it's a really smooth ride. So they've got, a, they've got a long way to go to get me interested in driving an electric vehicle. If you're interested in a Tesla 3, uh, we made a great video. And you can see right here, it's a driving Uber with a Tesla Model 3. Uh, Gabe Etz Hoken uh, made a video, he drove one, and uh, he tells you all his experience with it. So you can check out that video, the link will be below this video, and you can check this out. So number four, what does this mean for drivers? Well, first thing, it really means nothing because there's no requirement that you get an electric vehicle. So while it's a big proclamation, it's a bold statement, by the year 2030, Lyft says everyone's going to be driving an electric vehicle for Lyft. There's no teeth in it. So don't get yourself worked up about it because it's not a requirement. Second, in order to achieve the goal, Lyft has to entice uh, drivers to drive the electric uh, cars. And in order to do that, they're gonna have to address the issues I just detailed. The cost, the comfort, the range. And three, if they can't do that, if they can't make it cheaper than a regular car, more comfortable than a regular car, and give you the range so you don't have to disrupt your day several times to go you know, get electricity, it's not gonna work. So what are the key takeaways here? Their proclamation, Lyft's proclamation here that they're gonna be green by 2030, at this point, it's kind of like a fart in the wind. It doesn't have any teeth in it, right? Um, so on the one hand, it's very admirable, and I gotta give it to them. I gotta say, good for you. I am all for protecting our environment, and I believe in taking a stand even when it's an unreasonable stand. So I applaud them for that. And now it's on them uh, to make it enticing for the drivers so that we say we want to drive an electric vehicle. We see we can make more money if we drive an electric vehicle. We see it's not gonna disrupt our work day. And we see that it's uh, uh, comfortable for us. And uh, if, you, if we could have all those things, then I'll be first in line and say, Lyft, you won me over, I want to buy an electric vehicle and I want to drive for you. The other key takeaway is, what's with the timing? We're in the middle of a pandemic. Driver demand, I mean, demand for, for Uber and Lyft is like it's 30% of normal year from a year ago. Uh, and we're talking about the future in the year 2030. I just find that's kind of struck me as odd. I wouldn't say it's tone deaf, but for most of us, we're we're not even thinking about driving because we don't want to get sick. We don't want to get we don't want to get the virus. And then we have this news that we're going to be driving electric vehicles by the year 2030. It just kind of struck me as odd. Um, but overall, I got to say, good job, Lyft, um, making a stand, and let's go and 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 save the environment so that uh, the, the air we breathe for ourselves and for our children and our grandchildren, um, all the generations behind us can look back at us and say, wow, you guys really did something that made it a good place for us, this earth, a good place for us. So I'm, I'm, I, I applaud that very much. And for, it's also one of the very few times that Lyft has took a stand on something before Uber. Usually Uber takes the stand and then Lyft follows. So, uh, all right. Hey, if you have not subscribed to our channel, subscribe. 
join us. We put out five at least uh, videos every single week and um, sign up for notifications so that when we have a YouTube live, we'll let you know. All right. This is Jay Crater. I'm saying thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That'll help more people to see it uh, as we talk about electric vehicles in the year 2030. You all got and have a great day. Be safe out there.